Yes, indeed. In the twinkling of an eye, things can change. And our speaker this morning is very pleasant on the eyes. It's his practitioner, Carol Campbell, who really doesn't need any introduction. I'm sure during our encouragement, our consciousness will come across in all its glory. And I'm certain you'll be moved today. So to our speaker this morning, Carol Campbell. Good morning. Good morning to the Temple family here in the sanctuary and whoever is joining us on the World Wide Web. Let me add my own words of welcome to sunny, beautiful Jamaica, radiant in splendor and just gorgeous. My title this morning, I'm going to start with the title. It's Open Sesame Open. <laughs> Are you all familiar with the story of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Yeah. It appears in a collection of tales known as Arabian Nights, which includes stories about Alibaba, Aladdin and the Lamp, Sinbad the Sailor, Scheherazade, and others. Now I'm always on the lookout for truth in unusual places, and folk tales are often quite a good place to start as they are reservoirs of great wisdom. In this story, Alibaba, a humble carpenter, wanders into the woods one day to collect wood and overhears 40 men discussing the hiding place for stolen treasure they're carrying. He secretly follows them to a location where the head honcho loudly announces Open sesame, open! And magically, this huge stone glides aside, revealing the entrance to a cave. They take their loot into the cave, and after a while, they exit. When the leader declares, close sesame, close, the stone effortlessly rolls back into place. Alibaba is understandably intrigued. What kind of magic is this? So when the coast is clear, he goes by the cave and he shouts, open sesame, open. And guess what? The cave opens to reveal amounts of gold and brass and silver and other treasures. Now this is an amazing opportunity for Alibaba thinks, to step up in a life. So he helps himself to a couple bags of stuff and closes the entrance again. Close, sesame, close. And then he merrily sets off for home to share his good fortune with his wife. Alibaba is very wise with his newfound wealth and prospers mightily over the years. I won't go into the whole story because I want to focus on the action of declaring our intention in the face of apparent obstacles. In the Webster's Dictionary, open sesame can be translated to mean a password or something that unfailingly brings about a desired end. Now that sounds vaguely familiar, doesn't it? In other situations, we call that faith. It can also mean gaining access to something we might have previously thought unattainable. We all seek success, don't we? But apparently, it is always hidden behind some stone or some wall requiring some extraordinary action to access it. So let's talk about faith. Faith is not hope. Faith is fearless and sure. It is that which summons our imagination, the creative faculty of mind, the key to the kingdom. 
allowing us to see beyond our limited understanding. Faith sees to it that we are actively prepared for the desired results. It makes sure that we take the steps necessary to welcome the as yet unseen. It is with faith that we set our intentions. Now let me point out here, it is possible to have misdirected faith. If you think of faith as a constant on a continuum of creative energy, at the low vibration end, it looks like doubt, fear, anxiety, resentment, a conviction that the worst is about to happen. On the high vibration end, it is a joyful expectation of fulfillment. Being able to see the glorious end from the beginning, that is faith. Now there's a parallel story in the Bible in Joshua chapter 6, verses 19 to 24. I won't read it, but you all know the story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho coming down, right? Jericho is a very wealthy city, full of gold and silver and brass and iron. These treasures destined for the divine treasury. However, they were ensconced in this city of Jericho, and they were not being used very wisely. In the metaphysical Bible dictionary, Jericho represents human consciousness, the intellect full of treasure, but treasure that needs to be in a directed, in service to a higher purpose. Now we all know the story, to bring down the walls of Jericho, a mighty shout went up at Joshua's command and the walls came tumbling down. Open sesame, right? <laughs> in the Alibaba story, his wealthy brother, motivated by pure greed, which is a low vibration energy, convinces Alibaba to disclose the location of the cave. But he gets trapped inside and eventually he gets killed by the robbers because he couldn't remember the password. All the treasure in the cave couldn't help him. On the other hand, Alibaba's intention was for the betterment of his family and community. Sort of like an Arabian Robin Hood. <laughs> you know, we have a saying in Jamaica, teeth from teeth, God laugh. <laughs> now, I'm not advocating stealing from anyone, please. But the wrong intention can destroy you just as easily as the higher intention will prosper you and those around you. From a metaphysical point of view, this could symbolize the power of the mind to see possibilities in place of obstacles. Alibaba knew he wanted more, but was almost despairing over ever finding a way to lift him and his family out of their impoverished situation. Now faith, fearless as it is, requires courage. Courage to do whatever it takes to get to the desired results, especially when you do have no idea what the next step might be. But courage has within it the means to manifest the desire, the persistence that demands results, and the confidence that attracts opportunities. You ever wanted something so bad you could taste it? But when it came time to take that qualifying step, you chickened out, backed away. Was that acting in courageous faith? I don't think so. But all is not lost. A delay is not a disaster. As long as you recognize the process that is taking place and take the necessary steps to rectify it. So I want you to consider for a moment, what are some of the rocks that may be blocking the doorway to your treasure cave? 
We all desire successful living, don't we? Think about it for a minute. Write, the, write it down. I'm going to give you a few ideas to jog your awareness. Write them down so you can contemplate them later and add to it if you feel like. Are you living in the past, wistful for the good old days? Well, here's a tip. The good old days weren't always that good. It's just that you remember the good stuff by choice. Are you feeling discouraged because of some disappointment? Your marriage is on the rocks? You lost your job? Or you didn't get the job you were hoping for? Or you can't seem to stem the flow out of your bank account? And there's certainly no flow coming in. You're feeling angry and resentful for some perceived disrespect. Forgiveness is the key for your own sake and your own sanity. Now, the correct word spoken with power and conviction will open any door or crumble any rock. Everyone has the power to lift themselves above circumstances. Everyone. Because we believe in the control of conditions through the power of mind. The universal mind and our mind. This is stated in our Declaration of Principles of the Science of Mind. And believe me when I tell you, your barriers will disappear and fall away with the right declaration. So I have a few affirmations for you. These are courtesy of author Florence Scovel Shin, a new thought luminary, from her books, The Secret Door to Success and Your Word is Your Wand. I'd like you to say them with me, so I'm going to say them once and then we can say them together. I'll break them down. The walls of lack and delay now crumble away and I enter my promised land without delay. The walls of lack and delay now crumble away. And I enter my promised land without delay. Endless good comes to me in endless ways. Repeat. Good comes to me in endless ways. All lack, limitation, and failure are now banished from my consciousness. All lack, limitation, and failure are now banished from my consciousness. And I love this one. Doors fly open, and I enter the kingdom of good under grace. Doors fly open, and I enter the kingdom of good under grace. I hope you wrote those down, you know. <laughs> now, while there is an element of the magical in the story of Alibaba, truth is, everything we could ever want or need already exists, or you wouldn't be able to think about it, okay? So our good is already assured. We just need to claim it. Our treasure cave is overflowing. Nothing is too good to be true. Nothing is too good to have happen. Universal supply is infinite and endless. But as long as we are shackled to an idea of limited supply in whatever form, be it love, health, wisdom, money, friendships, opportunities, creativity, as long as we are shackled to those limiting ideas, we will forever experience lack. 
you have a right to expect good and more good. Yes, you have a right. You can claim it. And why do you have a right? Because it appeared in your consciousness to say, now is the time for you to claim this. Don't deny it. Expectation is the key to manifestation. You want me to say that again? Write this one down. <laughs> Expectation is the key to manifestation. So be courageous enough to claim what you desire. But understand this, we don't get what we say we want. We get what we are ready to receive. If all the heavens should open up and all the blessings be poured out on you like manna from heaven, you still would only be able to use what you could accept. Are we clear? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So if lack is in your experience, first, declare loudly to your own mind, open sesame, open. Then, register for that prosperity adventure coming up. That's September the 15th for 12 weeks. Register. Then, get ready to receive from the universal treasure house. Open, Sesame. Open. Me ready. Namaste.